If you are wanting to make your own spray hood or dodger, then you are in the right place. We have teamed up with Magnuson Sales from Estepona in southern Spain, who have got over 40 years of experience in this business, to show you guys the whole process from patterning to making it up in the workshop to fitting it. And this week is all about pattern work, making your templates, and the following video will be all about making it in the workshop. So let's get into it. The spray hood is such a good feature to have on board, whether it's for protection from the spray of the waves or that extra protection from the sun or even to coriander in the colder climates. And there's various different types. Some will have the aluminum frame with the glass windows, a bit more of a solid structure. And some will have the canvas that will go all the way down to the deck. Some bigger ones will have three metal bars, whereas ours just has two. But the process that we're going to show you today transfers across all of these sort of systems, no problem. And we're pretty confident that anybody can give this a try with the right knowledge and maybe a pair of helping hands. <laughs> And the great thing about this technique is that it's super affordable using simple off-the-shelf tools. So stick around until the end and I'll give you the download on the whole tools list for the process. So this is our trusty spray hood. She's now 14 years old. She's the original from the boat. She's already been reinforced a couple of times and there's only so many times you can go through the same stitch holes. She's getting tatty on the corners, stitching's coming away. And once again, we can't see through our windows. So it's time that she gets a makeover. So there's five stages within this process of which we will timestamp. The first one being preparing the frame. Second one being marking the center points. Third one, laying the plastic pattern material. Fourth one is marking the pivot points, the reference points, and the fifth one is marking your windows. So without further ado, let's see Danny the pro in action. The first thing to consider is the frame positioning. So once you've got your spray hood off, take some time to look at the framework and just double check, for example, the height for standing under it or the height for vision over it. And the proportions between the front and aft bars because you can always do some tweaking to the stainless steel frame before you get cracking with the template. Then you want to use some string to secure the frame so it's got structure from side to side as well. Tying this with a hitch knot is a great way to do this. It needs to be sturdy, so we recommend to use two to three pieces of string to do it. And once again, once you've secured the framework with the string, just double check that you're happy with the positioning of it. Next up, with your measuring tape and permanent marker, you want to mark up the centre of the bars. This will be used as a reference point for the panel pieces. Then you want to be applying the masking tape to all the surfaces on the frame that the plastic will make contact with to create a well-fitting template. And if you don't have the solid structure with the glass windows and aluminum frame, you'll be applying the masking tape directly to the deck. Then you've got your round of double-sided sticky tape. So run along the masking tape, applying the double-sided tape to the middle of the masking tape. And just a hot tip here, be careful not to lean forward on your knees onto the glass panels as these may not hold your weight. And now it's time to lay the plastic that's going to be making your template. It's recommended to work with oversized plastic panels to make the job a whole lot easier. So you're going to start by laying the top panel piece, starting at the flattest section, typically at the center point, and working out over the curves down to the sides. The aim is to get rid of as many wrinkles as you can but be really careful to avoid stretching the plastic in the process as this can make inaccurate pattern pieces in the workshop. And now you're ready to start marking up the template. So start by marking reference points like the centre line, the frame pivot points and any fastenings that you see. 
Then you want to move on to marking the aft bar. So essentially you're marking the seam here. So you want the line to be on the back of this bar. Now you can remove the top panel and focus on the front panel. So again, lay down your piece of plastic, starting from the flattest point in the center and working your way out, avoiding any wrinkles and avoid stretching the panel. And to keep this whole process easier, especially if there's a little bit of wind, keep trimming as you go once you've stuck to the double-sided tape. Then you want to remark all your reference points, pivot points, etc. And then move on to marking the front bar. Now this again is the seam line and should be just slightly forward of the middle of the bar. Now you can focus on the side panels making sure that they align with the front panel. So you need to make sure to put your reference points on there so you can align them up in the workshop. And make sure you have enough material to reach as far back as the side panel needs to come to meet your webbing bridge or your fastening system. And once you've secured this side panel piece, you can start to draw on the shape you're wishing to follow for this side panel. Once you've completed one side, it's recommended to then move this piece of plastic and take it over to the other side because if you're in luck and it's symmetrical, you won't have to do the work again. However, a lot of frames aren't gonna be symmetrical. So whip it over to the other side, grab your other color of permanent marker and mark on the positioning for that side on the same pattern piece, saving plastic. And now it's time for the fun part, marking the windows. It's recommended to work with three windows rather than one, because one large window can result in losing its shape and stretching over time. And a good starting point for the middle window is following the size of either the middle window in your frame or the size of the companionway hatch. And that, my friends, is the patterning process. So whip those pattern pieces off and that's you ready to go to the workshop. So the tools list is pretty simple. You're gonna start with some string or some webbing with a way of sort of um, cinching down to create some tension with a buckle like this. Next up will be masking tape. Hot tip is not to leave this on for any longer than you have to because if this is left on for definitely more than one night it will become structural and you will not get it off. Next up is double sided sticky tape, preferably half inch. Um, otherwise when you peel the, the plastic off it could all get a bit messy and stick to the plastic etc. So half inch double sided tape. And talking about plastic we're trying to be environmentally friendly and avoiding having excess plastic so uh, you saw in the previous footage basically um, heavy duty draping plastic so it's got a bit of structure nothing too cheap and thin or the brand called Duriscrim of uh, a plastic that's got a sort of a diamond reinforcement through it which is great because it prevents stretching over stretching so your pattern pieces are really accurate. Next up don't forget about these spring clips are really handy to secure the plastic in place whilst you're patterning and then sharpies or permanent markers uh, ideally more than one color so when you flip the pattern you can mark it with a separate color uh, so it's all clear when you are in the the workshop or when you start sewing got good old measuring tape to make sure you get accurate um, central positions and scissors to trim the excess plastic off so it's not wafting in the wind too much which just makes the process all that much easier. Talking about wind, I really recommend picking a non-windy day just for ease, a non-rainy day otherwise uh, the markers aren't going to um, go onto the plastic very well and another tip is to have a camera to hand and take a picture of the original spray hood and a picture of all the pattern pieces in place before you whip them off the frame because it'll be a lot easier when you come to creating the pattern on the sewing machine uh, if you've got a, a visual representation of it. We have some final finishing tips from the pro for you first of which is 
about marking the center point. So it'd be very easy to just mark the center point from one side, but it's really important when you're finding the center point is that you, you kind of work off both sides because the actual frame might not be symmetrical. So by working off both sides, it gives you the best chance. Next tip would be to do with um, any bends that you've got in the frame, because you might have sort of six bends that you're working with. If it's a tight bend, you might be really struggling to have the plastic sort of smoothly form over it and um, getting rid of all the wrinkles to help you get around that you can cut slits in the plastic but just make sure you don't go past your seam line that's super important um, the other huge tip is when you're doing your pattern work even if you're finding it really hard to make it fit do not split the one panel into three say so don't split your front panel into three pieces because it's easier to get it to fit right because it'll be really hard when you get into the workshop to make that fit really well so really try and not split your panel more than you have to um the other tip is that if you have a spray hood that is canvas all the way down to the deck, so not like ours, so you won't have the solid glass windows, your canvas will be going all the way down to the deck. Danny really recommends that using a track, um, a little bit like this, on the deck rather than fastenings is a great way to make it really smooth and avoid wrinkles and it makes sure no water is going to get through either so that's a really good tip the final tip that's really interesting is if you've got uh, your original spray hood that you're just wanting to replicate and um, leave it on so just tension everything up leave the original spray hood on and danny says um the best practice there would be to put the plastic over the original spray hood and use safety pins to uh, secure it at all the points and then do your marking with the permanent marker and that's a really great way to get an accurate pattern easy. So that pretty much wraps up the uh, templating patterning process and we'll see you next time we're in, when we're in the workshop with Danny when he's working behind the sewing machine showing you how all this pulls together.